Advanced Routing tab. Advanced routing may be used if multiple networks exist on the inside of the router. Let's take a look at an example. Here we have three networks on the inside, the 192.168.1.0 network, the 192.168.2.0 network, and the 192.168.3.0 network. The router will not know about networks that are not directly connected to it unless we tell it. So in this case, the router will not know about the 192.168.2.0 and the 192.168.3.0 networks. We have two ways of telling the router about these networks. One is the dynamic routing protocol named RIP and the second is static routing. If we use RIP, we need to disable NAT or network address translation. We will cover how NAT works in another section. Disabling NAT will break communication to the Internet from the inside network and it is not a recommended way of configuring a router that is directly connected to the Internet. RIP should be used on inside routers for discovering networks automatically. To do this, all other routers on the network need to be running RIP, otherwise the router is not going to learn anything from other routers. There are two versions of RIP and this device will work with both. To enable RIP, we first need to disable NAT and then enable RIP on the device. Now the router will talk with other routers using RIP to discover what networks are available. In this example, we are going to leave NAT enabled and will use static routing to tell the router about other networks on the inside. Let's take a look at our network topology again. As you can see, we need to tell the router about networks 192.168.2.0 and 192.168.3.0. Let's go back and configure these networks statically. This router supports up to 20 static routes. We can give each route a name, making it easier for us to remember where this network is. Let's call the first route Home Office. Destination LAN IP is the network we want to add. Our first network is 192.168.2.0. Subnet Mask tells the router which part of the above address is the network address and which is the host address. We are going to put in 255.255.255.0 to tell the router that 192.168.2 is the network section and the last octet, which is a zero, is the host section. The gateway IP address is the IP address of the router that is connected to the 192.168.2 network. As you can see, if we want to get to the 192.168.2 network from this router, we need to send our packets to the router with the IP address of 192. .168.1.2. Let's put the gateway address in. The interface option is used to tell the router which interface the static network is connected to. We have options LAN and Wireless, which tells the router the network is on the inside. Or we can select Internet, which tells this router that the network it is connected to is on the Internet side of the router. In our example, the network is connected to the inside, so we are going to select LAN and Wireless. Now we need to go and add our second network. Let's do that and save our configuration.
Let's take a look at our routing table by selecting Show Routing Table. As you can see, our routes are in the routing table, and the router will be able to route to them. Let's close this window. To delete a route from the routing table, select the route you want to delete and press Delete This Entry. This completes the Setup Page tutorial.